Hey everyone, my name's Tomato Anus, also known as Dongus Minimus, and this is a speedrun to adopt a baby in Fallout New Vegas. Or maybe it's a speedrun to recruit a baby to be a companion in New Vegas. Or maybe it's just a speedrun to wear a baby. I guess this is all a matter of framing. Regardless, this is a speedrun to do all of the above, which you normally can't do in Fallout New Vegas, but HBO's The Last of Us adaptation has me feeling inspired. I found a mod for this game called The Tribe of Two, which adds an orphaned baby companion for you to find, recruit, and raise. Like my videos covering my speedrun to eat a baby in Fallout 3 and speedrun to get pregnant in Fallout 4, this video serves as an explanation of the speedrun tech I used and route I took to do this faster than anyone ever has before. This speedrun I came up with does have a few additional requirements that you have to complete before you adopt the baby though, otherwise the run is invalid. I'll break down what those additional requirements are during the run though. I do have more mods installed than just the baby companion one though, and I've included a link in the description to a spreadsheet with all the mods I used in this run. Also, for the love of god, can someone please tell me why in certain play sessions my new Vegas launches as this small black window for somewhere between 15 seconds to upwards of a minute before launching as normal? I've been dealing with this for almost 5 years now, and I cannot find a solution. Please, I'm slowly losing my mind. Hey Chicago guy, time machine's still at the cleaners I see. And is the power out or something? Hey Minnesota guy, no, just the internet is out. Oh, then why'd you turn off the lights and light a bunch because of- Because what's the point if I can't play Enlisted, the World War II multiplayer shooter? Oh, I've heard about that. It has a strong focus on historical authenticity while keeping gameplay dynamic with players always in the middle of action, right? Yeah, plus you control a whole squad of soldiers where you outfit them all and give them orders in battle, and you can assume control of any active soldier with the press of a button. When you die, you just take control of a remaining squad member to stay into action. Wow, that does sound pretty sick, but just because the internet's out doesn't mean it's the end of the world or anything. <sighs> It may as well be, for a life without enlisted is a life without light. Wow, you're really dramatic. I know. You should check it out though, Minnesota guy. I think you'd like it. It has really realistic weapons and vehicle models with vehicle combat, and I know you love vehicle combat. You're right, I do like vehicle combat. It's so convenient to play too with it being available on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, PS4, and Xbox One with it all having cross-platform support. It's free to play as well, so you can download it with the link in the description. Does registering with the link in the description provide a free bonus like 3 days of premium time and several orders for troops and weapons? Yeah, exactly that. God, I miss it. So, this speedrun to adopt a baby. Let's get started. The most important mod for this speedrun, aside from the mod that adds the baby, and of course aside from the Knuckles-themed loading screens, is an anti-crash speedrunning mod that was created by a member of the New Vegas speedrunning community named Radioactive. This is the only mod that's allowed to be used in runs that are submitted to the leaderboard on speedrun.com, and helps mitigate the risk of crashing when performing many functions, namely the marquee glitch of New Vegas runs, infinite dashing. I'll get to infinite dashing in a moment, cause I got some splainin' to do. I mashed through all the DLC pop-ups and we'll do the same to the name prompt in a moment, then quickly choose to play as a woman. This is because I'm going to take the Black Widow perk later for one of the run's requirements. Wonder if you can guess what it is. My hazy vision from getting shot in the head is worn off, and I can now see that Doc must have been snacking on the world's strongest lemon before I woke up. And after choosing to play as Naya Nunba from Star Wars, I'll stand up and gain control. Once I do, I'll quicksave and quickload twice in rapid succession to skip two lines of Doc's dialogue. Quicksave quickloading does a couple useful things for the speedrun. The first is to skip lines of dialogue when you aren't in conversation with the person, like you don't have the dialogue prompt up where you select dialogue options. And before you ask, you can't just quick save quick load all of the opening dialogue I'm sitting through because I don't gain control of the character until I stand up, meaning I can't quick save or quick load until then. This is why I play the game in Italian, because Doc's intro dialogue is 4 seconds faster. My headcanon is that it's because he spends less time talking with his mouth and more time talking with his hands. Before I go over the other main uses for quick save quick loading, after I stand up, I'll quick save quick load twice like I mentioned before, then once more to skip another line so I can use the Vitamatic Vigor Tester. For this run, I leave all my stats as is, aside from luck which I max out for reasons you'll understand later. After I do my stats, I'm going to stop hop to Doc's kitchen where I'm going to grab a handful of terminal helmets from a crate that I've modded into the game. This is because the first requirement of the run is to grab and equip a terminal helmet, but I won't be able to equip one until I have my pit boy in a moment. Also, stop hopping is a faster way to get around than just walking where you flick your camera to the side and jump, then hold forward while you're in the air, and to chain them you pretty much keep doing that and letting go of forward whenever you land. It's sort of similar to circle jumping in the source engine but without the strafing, you have to do it constantly, and you can't press W when you're touching the ground. I'm now just mashing through this personality test and quick save quick loading through some dialogue and won't change any skills or select any perks to start since they don't matter for the run. 
After I'm done here, I'll speak with Doc once more, then quick save quick load while walking into a wall to clip through the wall and fall into the void, which relocates me to the default location of Doc's house, which is at the front door. Clipping through walls like this is the second main use for quick save quick loading in the run. Outside, I'll grab a Vault Boy companion from a modded in mailbox, which goes into my inventory until I activate him, then bind the grenade launcher from the Mercenary Pack DLC, bind my stim packs, equip one of the terminal helmets I grabbed, and fast travel to Good Spring so I can be closer to the general store. After dismissing a ton of pop ups, I enter the store where I shop with Chet and buy non standard ammo for the 357 Magnum revolver, a radio for backup that I've modded in, and sell a bunch of terminal helmets and DLC weapons to get as many caps as possible. I then fulfill the next requirement of the run by equipping the grenade launcher and telling Chet to think fast. I then loot his 357 revolver off his body and the standard ammo that comes with it, because having a gun with a one bullet at a time reload animation and two types of ammo so you can switch between them are required for a glitch called reload dashing. Reload dashing is done by holding a direction, swapping between ammo types, pressing the pit boy button followed by left clicking to interrupt the reload animation, and unequipping the weapon you're reloading. This briefly shoots you forward with a ton of speed and is a core piece of movement tech in speedruns of this game. Often when you do this though, you get launched in the air, so to avoid falling, all damage, you can quick save quick load to reset your momentum just before you hit the ground. That's another main use of quick save quick loading, resetting your momentum if you're going to take fall damage. Avoiding fall damage when reload dashing is important because reload dashing doesn't work if you have a broken leg. Something to note is that you have to be standing on the ground to be able to reload dash. You can't do it while you're in air, so falling is a bit of a necessity at times. There is one exception to this though. If you perform a reload dash and get launched in the air, and while you're still traveling upwards you let go of W, then when you reach the apex of the launch, you end up on kind of an invisible floor, and just stay floating in the air. This only lasts as long as you don't press any directional buttons though, and as soon as you do, you fall. The thing is though, you can reload dash off of this invisible floor, which is something I'm going to do at one point later in the run. You have to be pretty quick with it though, and only begin holding forward just before you pull up the pit boy The timing on this took me a little bit to get used to when I learned it a few years ago, but it's very easy once you get it figured out. While we're paused, may as well talk about infinite dashing now. Infinite dashing is kinda what it sounds like, an infinite reload dash. The way you perform it is by doing the steps to perform a reload dash, but with two differences. The first is that when you pull up the pit boy you don't unequip the weapon, you just lower the pit boy again. The second is that when you lower the pit boy and have control of your character, you have to both break a leg and quick save quick load at the same time. For whatever reason, breaking at least one leg at the same time as quick save quick loading after a reload dash setup shoots you forward like a reload dash, even though reload dashes normally don't work with a broken leg. This dash, similar to reload dashing, has a finite range to it, but unlike reload dashing, quick save quick loading during it doesn't reset your momentum. It resets the dash, meaning if you continually quick save quick load, you dash forever. Also, the infinite dash looks real hitchy and laggy right now because for the sake of this explanation, I've tried to edit out the loading screen since they pop up and flash a lot, but when I actually perform infinite dash in a couple minutes, I won't be doing so, so if you're photosensitive, I recommend closing your eyes during that part. Not right now though, I'll let you know when you should close them and when you can open them again after the infinite dashing is done. When you're infinite dashing, you have to constantly be holding W. If you let go, the dash stops. There is a bit of nuance to this though and ways to stop your infinite dash and continue it, but those are a bit more niche and used in high level any percent runs. The uses aren't really applicable in this route, so I won't be going into it. The big thing to mention about infinite dashing is that, as you might expect, it has a tendency to crash the game. Turns out, traveling at high speeds and forcing the game to load a bunch of things constantly isn't the best thing for the game's stability. This is what that speedrun mod I mentioned earlier is mostly used for and most useful for, mitigating the risk of a crash while infinite dashing. It's not a total fix to the problem though, because the longer you infinite dash for, the higher the chances that the game will crash. The way that infinite dashing is most commonly and reliably set up is by firing the grenade launcher straight up in the air, then swapping to the revolver as soon as possible and performing the dash as the grenade lands at your feet. Coincidentally, the timing on this is super friendly to speedrunners, like if you're good at performing the inputs to reload dashing smoothly, the timing works out perfectly where performing the dash as early as you possibly can syncs up really well with the grenade landing. There is still a bit of timing to it and it requires practice, but I assure you, the timing is easier and not as absurd as it looks. Alright, that all being covered, let's get back to the run. So despite this being a speedrun, I'm not in any immediate rush after killing Chet since I need to wait for something, so I killed some time by trying to set him up to watch what's about to happen. So right now, I'm actually being hunted down by a Xenomorph. You think I'm joking, but I'm not. I installed a mod that spawns a Xenomorph that hunts you down, and the next requirement of the run is that you have to 1v1 it in the general store with no weapons equipped. Just square up and throw down with your fists. 
This Xenomorph I'm about to fight is admittedly pretty weak and not hard to kill, but the thing about the mod is that a few minutes after you kill it, a stronger one spawns, and so on if you kill that one as well. I decided to fight the first Xenomorph early in the run so that I'm then on a timer of a stronger Xenomorph chasing me, that way if I go too slow, I get punished like the bad little boy I am. I then pull up my Pit Boy and activate the Vault Boy Companion as that's a requirement of the run, equip the Grenade Launcher, and bind the Revolver before heading outside and performing Infinite Dash. Now is when you should close your eyes if you need to. Once I turn into an airplane, I begin the process of discovering a couple locations to fast travel back to later. Here I purposely ramped up to the Good Spring Cemetery so that I have enough height to fly over some invisible walls that extend up from some of the rocky terrain. The first location that I'm heading to discover is the Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ since I'm going to be recruiting another companion there later. I'm then going to fly over the top of New Vegas proper to discover Aerotech Office Park on the other side of the strip since I'm going to use that location as a stepping stone for getting into the strip after my inaugural flight. I'll then begin flying southeast to make my way to Novak where I'm going to recruit another companion. Now some of you might be saying, hold up Mr. Anus, you already have one companion and you just said you're going to recruit two others, you can only have two companions max. Well, what some of you just said would be correct, if you weren't so short-sighted to think that I didn't install a mod that increases the maximum number of companions from 2 to 12. I just can't believe you didn't think I wouldn't install this very specific mod. So right now I've discovered Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ for getting the companion later, and Aerotech Office Park for getting into the strip, and I'm now on my way to Novak to recruit the next companion of the run, Rusty. You may be asking why I'm recruiting a ton of companions for this run, and it's as simple as we've got to assemble our strike force for protecting the baby. Pretty much I just want to roll up to any location like hell with the bodybuilders. When I arrive in Novak here and stop infinite dashing, I'm going to use a stim pack with the hockey I bound it to to heal my leg so I can reload dash and move around normally again since I'm now done with infinite dashing for the rest of the run. You can open your eyes now if you had them closed. So here I talk with Rusty real quick to recruit him. It's surprisingly easy to sell him on the idea of following us around. I then fast travel to Aerotech Office Park where I'm going to do a reload dash off of some sloped terrain in the fence ahead of me to launch into the air. This is a trick that I've always struggled with and only figured out how to do consistently right before I stopped running New Vegas the last time I ran it around three years ago. So I'm not very good at it right now. Jesus, three years ago, where does the time go? Once I'm launched in the air, I do what I talked about earlier where I let go of W as I fly up so that I land on an invisible floor, where I then do a reload dash forward to reach the monorail to enter the strip. Border Patrol agents hate this courier for this one trick. Click to find out why. When I load in, I do a reload dash sideways, and after opening the door there, I reload dash to a corner that I clip out at to be able to quickly access a door to enter the strip proper. I take the revolver back out while doing so because outside, after speaking to Victor to make him go away, I'm going to reload dash across the strip to enter the tops. This is because the next two requirements of the run are here. The first is that you have to kill Benny by sleeping with him, and the second is that you need to recruit Mr. Claw. That's Mr. Claw on the right here. I speak with him since I'm near him, which unlocks some dialogue with Swank pertaining to Mr. Claw, and then I hit a trigger slightly to the right to finish the quest they went that away so I level up. This is so that I can get at least 45 in speech so I can convince Swank to give me my stuff back, and also so that I can take Black Widow since I'm now level 2. Also I changed the level up sound with a mod as well. Don't tell Tommy Tallarico though. Now that I have my stuff back, I have to re-hotkey my revolver, and I also hotkey that radio for backup that I bought from Chet. Up here I seduce Benny by talking about how couriers know how to handle packages, and when he begins making his way to his suite fantasizing about what's about to happen, I reload dash upstairs to Mumbo Jumbo from Banjo-Kazooie who got a job as a cashier at the casino. I exchange 600 caps for chips because in order to recruit Mr. Claw, I need to purchase his contract from Swank for 2500 caps. And there's a secondary requirement to recruiting Mr. Claw that stipulates that the majority of those 2500 caps must come from gambling. This is why I maxed out my luck earlier, because after killing Benny, I'm going to play blackjack until I have 2500 caps total. After buying the chips, I still have 300 caps in my inventory, so I'll only need to gamble to win 2200 chips. Also, may as well talk about it now, my strategy for when I play blackjack isn't just a hit and stand when it would make sense to in real life. Sorry basic strategy, you don't apply here. Because I have 10 luck, the game is really generous if I hit when I shouldn't. The max bet I can do at the table is 200 chips, so I of course do that every hand, but if my hand is pretty much anything within the range of 8 to 16, I'm going to double down. If you're not if you're not familiar with blackjack, that pretty much means you double your bet in exchange for only being able to draw one more card to your hand. 
In actual blackjack, it's better to only double in specific situations, like if you have an 11, you should always double, or if you have a soft 17 and the dealer's showing a 3 through 6, you should double. In New Vegas, though, I found it's fastest to just throw all caution to the wind and double almost every time, unless it's a really, really bad situation to double in. More often than not, the 10 luck will protect me by drawing the exact card I need or something just 1 to 2 lower. Alright, so now that I have my chips, I'm making my way to Benny's suite, and after riding the elevator, I hold back and left, then quick save quick load to clip out and relocate to the default location for that floor, which is right next to Benny's bed. I then wait so Benny arrives immediately, and although I only need to wait for one hour for that, I wait for three so that it's guaranteed to be night at a later point in the run for a different requirement that I'll get to later. After killing Benny in his sleep, I leave the suite where I see this little perv running down the hall to try and catch a glimpse of the dirty deed, but sucks for him, Benny finished quick because Nyan Nunba has that gorilla grip coochie. Wow, that was certainly a brand new sentence. I'm now beginning the gambling portion of the run where I need to get at least 2200 chips, so it's time we address the elephant in the room. Why speedrun to adopt a baby? Aside from me not being some sort of monster who can't love a child that wasn't born of my seed as my own, it just seemed in line with the progression of speedrun to eat a baby and speedrun to get pregnant. But why though, and why all the mods and incredibly arbitrary rules? In short, because it seemed fun, which is the most important thing in speedrunning. Speedrunning itself is an incredibly arbitrary hobby. There is no one correct way to play a game, and there is no one correct way to speedrun a game. As I've said in the past, yes, Yes, leaderboards do exist and serve a purpose, with rules you have to follow to promote competition, but leaderboards are not required in order to speedrun. You can speedrun in any way you want. If something seems like it would be fun, then do it. Video games are created for entertainment, and if speedrunning a game with every NPC replaced by the Trix Rabbit sounds like something you'd enjoy doing, then do it. Don't worry about what other people may think of a run's legitimacy. If it's something that you'd find enjoyment in, then it's legitimate enough to do, because at the end of the day, we all want to be happy. No one is allowed to gatekeep you from doing what you find fun. The one thing I do have to say, of course, is that while you can speedrun however you want, if you want to be on a leaderboard, then please read and respect the rules. Rules. You will have to operate within whatever constraints have been outlined by that game's speedrunning community. But at the end of the day, finding enjoyment in what you do is more important than having your name on a leaderboard. Back to the run, I've now bought Mr. Claw's contract and I just did the next requirement of the run by recruiting the ever dapper Mr. Gek. I'm now on to the next requirement, which is that I have to go and talk to Mr. House. This is because Mr. Claw, Mr. Gek, and Mr. House all have the same first name, so I want to introduce them because I think they'd all be friends. This little stretch is a great example of some tech that I haven't really ever talked about before, but when I'm stop hopping and I'm going to interact with someone or something, I try to keep jumping while trying to interact. This is because when you land after being in air, you have a minor stagger of your character kind of going down then back up, and you can't interact with anything during it. It's just a minor thing that applies to things like trying to to talk to characters or interact with doors after stop hopping or falling out of bounds and being relocated to the default position. So now that I've introduced Mr. Joust to the other misters, I'm going to fast travel to Good Springs and tell Mr. Claw to wait there. This is because the next requirement of the run is to recruit Fistus, the companion who's located at the Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ, which I discovered while infinite dashing. For some reason, Mr. Claw attacks Fistus on site if Fistus isn't a companion, so I need Mr. Claw to stay at home right now. There is an additional requirement to recruiting Fistus though. You see, Fistus Fistus has only one wheel to move around on, and that doesn't seem like it could be very fast. Like, what's the fastest you've ever seen someone ride a unicycle? Can't be very fast. Because of this, fast travel is banned once I recruit Fistus, and I must join him by traveling on wheels using a motorcycle I modded in. In addition to that, as I ride back to Good Springs to pick up Mr. Claw and a couple other companions, I have to hum the tune of Riders on the Storm at least once and look at the moon while humming. So that's what you hear in the background here, me humming Riders on the Storm while I performed this run. Something to note about the motorcycle is that you can still take fall damage while riding it, so when I go over some rocky terrain in a bit, I'm careful to not drop too far. I also try to avoid bumping into rocks or jagged terrain because that interrupts your movement and also makes a loud clang that hurt my ears when doing runs. This motorcycle ride is the reason why I waited 3 hours for Benny instead of just one, so that it was guaranteed to be night at this part. Also, originally I was going to use a mod that changed the moon to look like this so that I could make a Nick Drake reference, but Nick Cage has a bit more mainstream appeal so I went with him as the moon instead. Dead. Gotta game the algorithm, because that's totally how it works. Anyways, as always, I'd just like to take a moment to say that I hope you're all doing well. If you're not, then please remember that how you're feeling does not define you, nor the rest of your life. It may not seem like it, but there are brighter days ahead, and how you're feeling right now cannot take those brighter days away from you. One day you'll look back and think about where you were now, and like I always say, it'll be exactly that. 
where you were and not who you were or are because again those feelings do not define you and they are not permanent like i always say no feeling is final there is a tomorrow and you will be here for it specifically repeating those mantras to myself has gotten me through a lot of low periods in my life and knowing that despite whatever is going on it cannot take away from me the fact that when i go to bed i'll wake up tomorrow has helped me immensely so i just wanted to pass along the message in case anyone out there needed to hear it just please always remember that it's okay to talk to others about things and you're way stronger than you think you are Getting back to the run, I hop off my motorcycle here and talk to Mr. Claw to get him to follow me again, and then reload dash down the road to in front of Doc's house where I talk to the next required companion, Walter, who I bully a little bit by telling him to give me 50 push-ups before dashing away because that's an unwritten requirement of the run. This dash brings me to the last two companions I have to recruit in the run, Milton and Hans, who are two business roaches that are selling life insurance. A nice change of pace after recruiting the bottom feeder that is Walter. I'll then dash to a nearby vault that I've modded into the game that's located under a manhole cover outside of Good Springs. Completing this vault's quest will satisfy the penultimate requirement of the run, solve a mystery. When I go to interact with the manhole cover is a perfect example of what I talked about earlier where I get staggered from landing and I'm unable to interact for a moment. Inside the vault entrance, I quick save quick load multiple times in a row to clip through the door right in front of me so that I can make my way down to the vault proper. The mystery of this vault is that everyone was wearing a different color suit and one of them sabotaged the oxygen supply and I have to figure out who among them was the traitor. Hmm, the end of that sentence didn't sound right. Here I have to quick save quick load to get past Mr. Claw, and after interacting with the terminal to open a door, I'll be able to go down to the meeting room and figure out who the traitor was. As soon as I go past this door, a dying status effect is immediately applied to me where I lose 4 HP a second as part of being in the oxygen deprived vault. By the way, the traitor was white, but what's new? I'll then clip out a bounce twice in a row to exit the vault and the vault entrance back to the wasteland, and even though I solved the mystery and completed the quest, I still have the dying status effect since I didn't activate a trigger in the quest that removes the effect. I pop a couple stim packs to top off on health before I make my second and final motorcycle ride to the baby since we're now at that part of the run. I have to be quick with getting to the baby because I'm slowly dying. Whatever I have, it's terminal. When I eventually get off the motorcycle, I'm going to finally use the radio for backup that I bought from Chet at the start of the run, which summons the Granny Defense Force. This is the last requirement of the run, to have help when adopting the baby, because who better to help with a baby than a bunch of grandmas? There's actually a fair bit of luck involved with this final step of the run, because the Granny Defense Force is only summoned if there are enemies around, and a coyote doesn't always spawn here by the baby. As soon as I pick the baby up, the run officially ends. Also, yeah, the baby is located right near Good Springs where we started the run. I take this moment to let all my companions gather around so I can introduce them to the baby, and there's actually one companion who arrives that I did didn't recruit in the run, Balloon Man. I installed the mod for him and you're supposed to go and find him twitching in a corner in Nellis Air Force Base, but the mod is bugged out and he just starts off following you and trying to catch up to you. Guess this balloon is faster than a xenomorph. Wow, I've never seen someone cry like that or use that many tissues. Oh, the internet's back on. You, uh, you playing Enlisted? The World War II multiplayer shooter? Yep. The one with vehicle combat and non-stop action thanks to squads and combat? Yep. You gonna say anything other than yep? Yep. Okay, um, I can do this. Click the link in the description to download and play Enlisted for free and get a free bonus for registering with the link. You can play Enlisted yep. on- Wait, what? Did you say something? Yep. <laughs> you can play Enlisted on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PS5, PS4, and Xbox One, all with cross-platform support. Again, just click the link in the description. Yep. So if you've made it to the end here, thank you so much for watching, and if you have any other ideas for runs like this, whether they're in the Fallout series or any other game, please leave a comment below suggesting it. Additionally, if you enjoyed this video but aren't subscribed, then please consider subscribing. I don't typically ask for people to subscribe, but it's one button click which doesn't take much work to do, and it's a quantitative way for me to gauge interest in this type of video. Anyway, I want to take a moment to say thank you to Shero, the current New Vegas Any% World Record holder, for giving this video a watch to make sure all the information in it was accurate. 
accurate. He recently set a new any percent record, so if you want to give it a watch and now maybe understand a bit of what's going on, then be sure to check it out. Link is in the description. I'd also like to say thank you, as always, to everyone who supports the channel on Patreon. Without you, it would not be possible for me to continue making these videos. By contributing on Patreon, you get access to videos early, videos without ads, access to the occasional live stream Q&As, the ability to vote on future videos, and more. Monetary support is entirely unnecessary, but you patrons still do it anyway to help support the channel, and it is honestly so appreciated. So again, thank you to everyone who supports the channel through Patreon. And lastly, as as always, be sure to check out the Tomato Anus Discord server. It's a super chill place where people are able to just relax and chat about whatever, and they're all super welcoming and inclusive over there. Plus there's a channel for pictures of dogs wearing clothes, that's mostly what I use the server for. That's all for this video though. This was a speedrun to adopt a baby, I've been Tomato Anus, and I hope you have an above average day.